tra a tradition of resurrection morning. You know, like the Paul talks about, you know, this same spirit. You know, the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Paul says, will quicken, you know, your mortal bodies. And boom, you know, that same spirit. It's not the same spirit. I'm sorry, that's not my, that's not my subject this morning. But I do want to tell you, there are many of us here, um, some we have not seen in a long time. Some I've never seen. I welcome you. I praise God for you being here. We're thrilled that you decided to spend Resurrection Morning uh, with us. And uh, uh, we, we hope you are enjoying Jesus with us. But uh, maybe you're here and this is the first time you've been to a church in a long time. Um, and if that's the case, I want to invite you to take another look. Amen. Take another look. Maybe, 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 um, you know, this is your first time. You know there's something going on. You know you've been looking for something. You can't quite identify what it is. However, you've um, probably picked up a lot of things only to discover what you're looking for. That ain't it. Anybody else been there? You know, you're looking for something, and you think you found it. You embrace it only to discover. That's not it. Okay, St. John chapter number 20. Let's begin with verse number 1. And the word of the Lord reads like this. Uh, this is English Standard Version. Whatever you have, follow along. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Verse number two, so she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple. The other disciple here is the writer, John. He kind of refers to himself in the third person. I don't know what was wrong with John, but anyway, you know, he kept referring to himself that way. Uh, to the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and you know John gonna let us know that you know, John felt like Jesus loved him more than everybody else. And quite honestly, I feel like he loves me more than he loves. Okay, and so anyway. Okay, so uh, the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, so Mary says to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple. Who's the other disciple? John is the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Verse 4, both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. That's John letting you know that he was faster. It's, it's funny what you'll read when you read the Bible, isn't it? Okay, that's another thing, okay? Okay, so they, they, they ran. Verse number 5. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloth. Who was the he? Who got there first? John. Okay, so John gets to the tomb. He stoops and he looks in. He looks in and he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and, and Peter, well, you know what Peter is going to do. Peter went in. Peter went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there and the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Verse number eight. Then the other disciple, then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. Verse number nine. For as they did not understand the scriptures, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. Can I read a little more? Just a little more. This is for context. This will help us. Verse number 11. Now remember, at verse number 1, who did all of this start with? Mary. It started with Mary. Okay? So now we get back to Mary. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus 
standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. How is Mary going to carry a man's body by herself? I don't know. But Mary said, all you got to do is tell me where he is and I'll take it from there. It is amazing what you read when you read the word. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. I will stop reading there and ask the Lord to just bless both the reading and the hearing of his word. Would you look at somebody and tell them, say, look again. Look again. Okay, so it's interesting that in verses 1 and 2, Mary comes to the tomb and the stone is removed. Now, please understand that Jesus didn't need the stone to be removed for him to get out. The stone was removed for you to get in. Now look at somebody and say, you got to get that part right. Yeah, yeah. Because if the power of God can raise him from the dead, he can come. And Jesus later, we know, he walked through a wall. That the disciples were in a locked room, door locked, window shuttered, and it did not prevent Jesus from entering the room. A stone in front of the opening of the tomb would not prevent him from exiting the tomb. The stone was rolled away so you and I could get in. Can I ask, what's keeping you from getting to where Jesus is? Maybe it's your history. Maybe it's some bad experience you've had. Some old mother in the church who was mean as a rattlesnake. Lord, forgive me, but some of us. Y'all are going to look at me like I ain't telling the truth. But you know, some, some folks that, that need Jesus the most, you find them where? In the church. You cannot allow a stone from your past to keep you from entering into the tomb. Are you okay? Yeah. Don't, don't, don't let stuff hinder you. Don't, don't let your past hinder you. Don't let some past experience stop you. Somebody let you down. Somebody lied to you. You live long enough, a whole lot of people gonna lie to you. You keep living, a whole lot of people will let you down. But I trust in God. And instead of going in, Mary ran away. Sounds like some of us. In this wonderful service, this incredible uh, spiritual atmosphere and environment that we're experiencing, instead of some of us going in, we're running away. Yes, sir. We're running away emotionally. We're running away spiritually. Yes, God is in the room and he's wooing you and engaging you. And you hear him tugging on the strings of your heart and yet you won't answer. Look at somebody tell me, say, stop running. Can I draw your attention to verse number eight? I'm, I'm almost done, I, I, I promise. Then the other disciple, it says, who reached the tomb first also went in. Peter got there. And Peter, 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 listen, when you're, when you're Peter, when you're like Peter, you know, cussing, fussing, cutting off folks' ears, y'all ain't gonna say amen. And, and let me tell you the quality of a swordsman Peter was. It was not Peter's intent to cut off Malchus's ear. It was Peter's intent to cut his head off. But Peter was a fisherman and not a swordsman. Y'all ain't gonna say man. Maybe this is making too much sense. That, that Peter, was, let me show you my skill, I'll cut your ear off. No, no, Peter was trying to do the man deadly harm and did not know how to use a sword. Kind of reminds me of David when he was about to step down into the valley of Elah, there to take on Goliath. Saul, who was willing to let the little boy fight a grown man's fight, said, here, put on my armor. And, and David put it on. 
But David said, listen, I can't go in this. I haven't proven this. I, I haven't fought any battles in this. You, you got to take the, you got to fight the way you know how to fight. And the poet said, down on my knees when trouble rise. I talk to Jesus beyond the skies. For he promised me that he would hear my plea if I would what? Stay on my knees. You can't fight on Facebook. Okay, anyway. 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 You can't fight on Facebook. You can't fight on social media. You, you got to get in the face of God. At some point, you have to enter in. You have to see for yourself. This morning, God by his spirit is calling you to take a look into the tomb for yourself. You don't have to take Peter's word for it. You don't have to take my word for it. You can see for yourself. Look at somebody and tell them, say, look again. Look again. Mm. Look again. You might say, I looked already. And to that I say, look again. You might say, I, I was the first one to the tomb and I saw the stone was rolled away. Yeah, but you know your big mistake? You didn't look. You just ran the other way. Look again. Verses 11 and 12. Now, I, 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 I have to close. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. Now, 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 now Peter and John, they, they leave. And the scripture says Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look in the tomb. Now she's looking for herself. She's looking for herself. And Mary saw something that Peter and John did not see. God wants to show you something of himself that nobody else can describe to you. Nobody else can see for you. Nobody else can experience for you. But you got to be willing to take a look. Am I preaching yet? Yes. Okay, lift your hands and say yes. yes. Okay, there, there, now you got that out your system. Come on. Mary stooped and she took a look and she saw, she saw the angels of the Lord. And they said, woman, why are you crying? What's going on with you? Why, 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 why are you weeping? Mary saw what the others didn't see. And God wants to show you something. But you got to be willing to look. This morning, in the midst of all of your situation and all of your circumstance and everything that's going on in your life. Yes, on this Easter morning, you got your new stuff on and praise the Lord. You look good. Ain't nobody tell you yet this morning. I'm here to tell you, you look good. But you still got to look for Jesus. You still going to have to find him. Let me draw down to a close. Verse number 13, they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Can I just make a point right here? Maybe you've been to church before, and, and maybe you've been hurt in church. There ain't no hurt like church hurt. All the people who've been hurt in church say amen. 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 Ain't, no, ain't no hurt like church hurt. There's no hurt like church hurt. Because these people, you wouldn't expect hurt to come from. And yet it comes. And yet it comes. And because of hurt, you've turned your back on church. And you said, listen, I, I'll find it at the club. You, 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 you don't want what you go find at the club. You, you, I can't even say that. I started to say, I can't say it, but I started to say You'll bring something home from the club and you have a heck of a time trying to get it out your house. <laughs> then my mic go out. Okay, you keep going. The one thing I love about the church is that it doesn't belong to you nor does it belong to me. In Matthew chapter number 16, Jesus said, I build my church. And if it's Jesus' church, then it's the Father's church. Because in St. John chapter number 5 and verse number 17, Jesus says, my Father is always working. Therefore, I'm working. And oh, by the way, I only do what I see the Father doing. And in St. John chapter number 12, Jesus says, my Father is always speaking. 
and therefore I'm speaking. And oh, by the way, I'm only saying what I hear the Father saying. So if Jesus is saying it's his church, then the church belongs to the Father. And it's the Father who's building it. And what I'm discovering, even as a senior pastor, that God is not building his church based on my specifications. I don't get to decide. It's his. And he's building it. And he's assembling it the way he chooses to assemble it. And sometimes we come to church and we encounter abrasive people. Well, how else are those rough edges going to get sanded off of you? If you don't encounter some sandpaper. I'm preaching good. Y'all. I'm preaching good. Now, that don't mean you just willingly walk around and be sandpaper either. We're going to have some time in the office together. Rubbing people the wrong way is not a ministry gift. It is not an anointing of the spirit. Say amen. amen. Mary said, they taking them away. And you look at some churches and the last one you find in some of these places is Jesus. We worship in everybody and everything but Jesus. But I'm here to let you know he's not left his church. He has not abdicated his authority. He's not left an empty throne. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah, ruling over us as the lamb of God. He sits high and he looks low and he is risen. And if you don't believe me, you ought to take another look. And so, Jesus said to her, he, 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 he says, uh, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? And she supposed that he was the gardener. And she, she gave her story. And she said, I, I, I'm looking for him. And, and if you've moved him, tell me. And she, she said, if you move them, tell me. And I'll, I'll, I'll handle things from there. And, and Jesus, he's so kind to us. He, lets, he has a way of letting us know we can't handle things ourselves. The scripture says that it's in him that we live and move and have our being. It's, it's in him. He's the center point of our lives. Without him, we can do nothing. Jesus said that, right? Come on. Without me, you can do nothing, St. John 15. Listen, you need him every step of the way. And, and because Mary was full of grief and anguish, and she was beside, she was talking all outside her head. Show me where the dead body is and I'll take him away. One little Mary gonna carry a whole dead man. Not gonna happen. And Jesus said, Mary, you outside your mind. And so Jesus just simply says, Mary, nobody can call you like Jesus can call you. Nobody can say your name like Jesus can say your name. You know how when your mama call you and based on what she calls you and how she calls you, you know what's going to happen next? My mother would say, William Thomas. And I'm like, oh, I'm a dead man. She'd say, William Thomas. And I'm, it's, it's over. It's a wrap. I'm, she going to prop me up on every leaning side. And evidently, I was, I was leaning. I was leaning. But there were other times when my mama would say, Billy. And I, whew. No, nobody can call you. Nobody can call you like your maker. Nobody can call you like the one who laid down his life for you. Nobody can call you like the one who shed his blood for you. Nobody can call you like the one who spent three days in a new tomb. Nobody can call you like the one who got up on the third day with all power in his hand. Nobody can call you like that. And this morning he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This morning I hear him saying, Billy, Thank you, Thank you. when he calls my name, I, I, all, all the sense I didn't have in the previous moment, boom, I'm back. I'm back. Let somebody say, I'm back. I hear him calling my name. I'm back. I thought he was missing and all along, he's right here. Lord, I'm with you. 
even to the end of the age. I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I'm with you. And somebody said, well, he ascended and he left. And Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. He sends the comforter. Oh, this is so good. And my time is so up. But if you're here and you haven't been to church in a long time, listen, let me help you. Don't make it about church. Make it about Jesus. Don't, don't make it about New Bethel. Make it about Jesus. Don't make it about 175 Inglewood Avenue. Make it about Jesus. And I beg of you, take another look. For he is the savior of the world. He is our redeemer. He is our keeper. He is the everlasting father. He is the prince of peace. And the Bible says that he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace is upon him and by his stripes. It's about Jesus this morning. And you need to take another look at him. I know there's a preacher let you down somewhere. A church mother, a deacon, I know, I know. And you, 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 you stop blaming everybody else. Because the biggest letdown in your life probably been you. But Jesus says, I got you. Come on. Come on, I got you. Come on. I'll carry you. Come on, I'll lift you. Come on, I'll deliver you. Come on, I'll free you from you. Save you from yourself. Okay, as I take my seat, would you tell somebody, say, take another look. Take another look. Go and stoop down and look in that tomb. You're going to see what you didn't expect to see. You'll hear what you didn't expect to hear. You'll have an encounter the likes of which will change your life from the inside out.